Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about the best winter boots that money can buy. Now, these boots don't do a great job at fitting on my current setup, so apologies in advance if you can't see the boot in its full size. That's why I have B-roll. Anyways, guys, before we get into this, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And now let's jump into the best winter boot that money can buy. Now, there are actually two of these boots in a way, and today we're going to be talking about Steger Mucklucks in general. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Yukon and the Arctic. So these are the two different boots that I have, and I'm going to be talking about what makes them so awesome for winter, for winter time excursions and being outdoors in the winter. So now let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're going to start off with the Arctic. Now, what makes this thing incredible? Now, it doesn't necessarily look like a revolutionary shoe. On the outside, it looks pretty basic, maybe pretty old school to some people, but essentially what this little muckluck is, of course, it is a muckluck at the core, but essentially you have this leather kind of lower portion, and then you have an upper made of canvas, and of course, it uses leather lace to tie it all up to your leg. But on the inside, you have a very thick wool kind of booty that surrounds your whole foot. And it's kind of hard to uh, show because there is so much canvas to get past, but you can see you have a very thick wool uh, booty that surrounds your foot. And then on top of that, what helps make it even better is this same thickness of wool is actually doubled. Sorry, show that properly again. This same thickness of wool is actually doubled underneath your foot, or it is an option they send with your mucklucks to have an extra layer of wool under your bottom, uh, under the bottom of your foot. And that really does make a huge difference, um, that amount of wool when you are walking around, hiking, trekking, uh, doing anything in the winter when it is negative 20, negative 30, even negative 40. So, what makes these things so incredible, aside from their extreme warmth, is their comfort and durability. So if you actually are or have been around Alaska for any length of time, you will have probably seen one of these two iterations of Steegers. They are very popular here in Alaska, at least here in central Alaska, and for good reason. Once again, they are extremely durable, very well-made kind of moccasin, muckluck type boots, and they are also extremely comfortable because you have this outsole that is made of a very sticky, very grippy rubber, and that is essentially just fused onto a rubber, or sorry, that is just fused onto a wool um, insole. So it is very comfortable, and because this is a muckluck, it has a very low, or your foot sits very low to the outsole, so it has a kind of uh, natural, almost barefoot kind of shoe feel to it, which makes it not only more nimble, but once again, very comfortable to wear uh, for long periods of time. So those are some of the things that make it uh, very popular here in Alaska. And once again, for very good reason, they are very well built. It is not uncommon to see many of these several decades old that people are still wearing it to this very day. And of course, these ones are newer. They do darken and kind of get a patina on the canvas and the moose hide leather. Uh, they do kind of darken and, you know, show their use, but I think that just actually makes them more awesome than anything. So aside from that, the thing that makes these stand out from other types of mucklucks is the fact that a lot of your traditional kind of military styled mucklucks use a lot more canvas or material or fabric or textile um, for the kind of upper portion of the boot. And essentially what ends up happening is especially when that canvas is interfacing with the rubber and as it flexes, it breaks down those fibers and you start to get rips, holes, tears, and stuff in that canvas. And so because Steger has made the whole kind of lower portion of this boot uh, leather, it makes it 
very durable and much more resistant to things such as tears, rips, and once again, especially when it interfaces with or gets bent, you know, when you're taking steps and you're bending that toe, you know, several hundred times when you're wearing it, uh, you know, in any duration, you know, the leather is going to be a lot more durable for that. And so this canvas by no means is necessarily a weak material, but it does have its weaknesses. And one of those is constant bending, constant, you know, use or constant flexing of those fibers. They can't find they can't flex as much as leather can. In addition to that, like I said, leather is much more resistant to things like tears or ripping um, because of its given nature. So definitely uh, a much better choice and that is what makes the Steegers much more durable than a traditional or cheaper kind of US Air Force muckluck for instance. In addition to that, the other benefit that something like Steegers have or couple other benefits is the fact that um, you have much thicker wool on the inside. It is noticeably thicker than much or many other competitive offerings, which obviously makes this much warmer. And then of course, the last benefit to this being a traditional muckluck is the fact that this is a almost barefoot like shoe where your foot is sitting so much lower in the actual shoe itself and that may not seem like a huge thing but if you wear a lot of things such as bunny boots or mucklucks like military mucklucks you'll find that your foot is sitting much higher in the shoe so it's almost like you're standing on a pedestal and what really ends up happening or the, what can be problematic with that is when you're using um, snowshoes if you are in a snowshoe and your foot's kind of sitting on that pedestal it's very easy for your shoe to roll or your foot to kind of roll in the bindings of your snowshoe and while that doesn't necessarily usually cause any injuries it means that it will shift your snowshoe and let your snowshoe kind of slide sideways into snow and then you end up digging down deeper with this because your full foot is sitting on that binding and you're not really sitting you know kind of on this pedestal it really allows for a much better fit and a much easier time utilizing things like snowshoes. So that's another big benefit that I've noticed when going over to things like Steak or Mucklucks. Now those are a lot of the benefits and a lot of those benefits hold true over to the newer Yukons, but I thought I'd go over the Yukons as well because they're a little bit different and I, I wanted to talk about some of the differences in between these two. So the first thing is, like I said, there are a lot of similarities. They're both rated down to the same coldness, which is negative 30 and potentially colder, depending on how you wear them. I would say if you are intending on wearing a Steger Mucklock down to negative 30 or colder, I would recommend doing what I did with my Arctics, and that is sizing up, so going a size bigger than what your foot is and then also going a size wider. So I'm just a size 11 normal or regular. And so with this one, I went to a 12 wide. So this one is noticeably warmer than my standard regular fit Yukon. And that's just because there's more space for me to put a bigger, warmer sock in there. And there's also more air space that uh, kind of gets trapped in there so it's not as form fit to your shoe or your foot sorry and uh, that is definitely noticeable now by no means does that mean that these Yukons are cold they are certainly warm but these ones are a little bit warmer and if I was going to wear something down to negative um, 30 or colder I would definitely pick the Arctics over the Yukons but that being said, now let's jump into some of the other differences. So the most notable one, of course, is the color. The Arctic goes for more of a kind of traditional appearance. So you, you have the natural color of the leather and then you have just a natural colored canvas. The Yukon is a modern take. So they have black or dyed black leather and then they have a um, nylon upper so they replace the canvas with nylon the other thing to note is that the gaiters on these uh, or kind of the uppers the arctics are much longer so it's kind of hard to show on this camera in particular but that is the arctic and that is the yukon so you can see there hopefully that the uh, arctic goes up a good bit i think about two two and a half inches more in its kind of upper portion so usually when i wear the arctics i will not wear 
uh, gator or anything with them because they are pretty tall themselves. But usually when I wear the Yukons, I actually slip my pants over the top of this so that there's not any snow intrusion because there is not as much of a kind of upper to this boot. So if that's an important thing, definitely keep it in mind. But that is just kind of a difference that they have uh, in between them. Aside from that, and aside from the coloration and the use of nylon as opposed to canvas, there's really not much, too much difference. They use the same kind of rubber for the outsole. And once again, super, super tacky, very grippy. I cannot express how grippy the rubber is on these uh, outsoles. And that actually is a really helpful thing, especially when you're walking on colder, or when you're walking in the cold and when you're also uh, walking on slippery surfaces. This definitely offers a lot of traction and having a really grippy rubber like this means that when the rubber does get cold, it retains more of its flexibility. It retains more of its grippiness. Whereas a lot of your kind of uh, more modern boots, they use, um, not alloys, but essentially mixed rubbers that have different components in them. So when they get cold, they get very solid and essentially they get like bricks and they offer very little to no traction and very little grip. And so this rubber is very different from that, it is more of a pure rubber so that it actually stays grippy when it gets cold. So that is an important thing to note when it comes to the outsoles on them. Of course, once again, you're going to be seeing the same outsole, same, or sorry, same insole, same kind of uh, wool booty that is on the inside of the Arctic, on the inside of the um, Yukon. So ultimately, both are very effective, and if you get them properly sized to meet your needs. Both have the same temperature rating. Once again, this one's a little bit cooler for me because this is my true size and this one is sized up. But either way, they are very effective, very lightweight and very comfortable mucklucks to wear out in the cold. And honestly, I think for around about $200 is what they cost, um, depending on what options you get and such. Um, Overall, it's a very hard boot to get, or very hard boot to beat for the price and for what they offer you for wintertime insulation, protection, and uh, overall comfort. So that has been the Steger Muckluck. They may not be the best winter boot out there, but they're probably one of the best winter boots you can buy. They are certainly Alaskan rated down to negative 30. Negative 23 is the coldest I've worn these Arctics down to. So they certainly are comfortable winter boots to wear prolonged uh, if you're looking to go outside for any duration of time. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. There will be a link down in the description below where you can check out Steger's website and order them yourself. No, this is not affiliated. Did not get uh, paid to do this. I did buy both of these mucklucks with my own money. So just as a disclaimer there, but uh, I do definitely love them. And I think, like I said, they are very hard to beat for the price and for the conditions. Okay, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.